So, um, ladies and gentlemen, a couple things I'm just going to, as we go through this, the, the main important thing, if you guys remember, what you guys are going to want to write down, that is the very, very standard thing. Whenever we're dealing with quadratics, I always like, the first thing I always want to do is identify what my A, B, and C are. So I can say A, B, and C. Now remember, A is the coefficient of my quadratic term, which is my x squared. So my coefficient in this case is 1. B is the coefficient of my linear term, which is x. So in this case, it is 5. And C represents my constant, which in this case is negative 3. OK, fair enough. That's the easy part. Everybody should have that done. It's like the first step. You don't have to do it, but I figure, Paige, when you're going through these problems, doing quadratic formula or solving or whatever, it's nice to know exactly what A, B, and C are. The next thing is to identify the axis symmetry. So in your notes, I gave you guys x equals opposite of b divided by 2 times a. So we simply just plug in opposite of b, which would be negative 5, divided by 2 times 1, which is a negative 5 halves. Right? Um, so that's going to be your axis symmetry. If you guys were to convert that to a decimal, that's going to be negative 2.5. Right? So if you guys are asking like to graph this, the best thing I'd probably say when graphing is, yeah, kind of think of it as a decimal. Convert your fraction to a decimal. And then you could say negative 2.5. Well, there's negative 2 and there's negative 3. Negative 2.5 is between negative 2 and negative 3. So therefore, I'm going to make a nice dashed line at negative 2 point, at x equals negative 5 fifths. And that is going to be my axis of symmetry. All right, now to find the vertex. This is the difficult part of the problem, we zoom, but we're not always going to have whole numbers for our axis symmetry. So to find the vertex, remember we're going to plug in our x value, and then we're going to plug that into our equation to find the vertex. Because remember, the vertex is a coordinate point. It has an x and a y coordinate. So I'm simply going to take y equals negative 5 halves squared plus 5 times negative 5 halves minus 3. Well, negative 5, ha negative five, um, five half squared is going to equal positive 25 over 4. You square the top and you square the bottom. 5 times negative um, 5 halves. Remember, you just multiply across. So I'm trying to bring back what we learned about fractions at the beginning of the year. So that would be a negative 25 halves. And then I have minus 3. Now, if you guys remember, if we're going to be adding and subtracting fractions, they all have to have the same denominator, right? So what we can do is get these. You can see that my common denominator is going to be 4. So I want to get these all to be a common denominator of 4. Now, obviously, you could plug this in your calculator if you had one of those and do it. But I'm trying to leave this in fractions and do some fraction operations. So you have 25 over 4 minus 50 over 4 and then minus 12 over 4. Uh, so you have negative 25, so I'm getting negative 37 over 4. Yes? And if anybody did that, you could see that 4 divides into negative 37 nine times with 1 as a remainder. So you could also rewrite this as a mixed number of negative 9 and 1 fourth which is also equal to the decimal approximation of negative 9.25. Did anybody get negative 9.25? Good. OK. So I'll just write this as a negative 37 fourths. But if you guys want to graph the fraction, think of it as a decimal. So we had to go down, we got to go down to negative 9.25. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's going to be down 9 and then just like 0.5 away, which would be like right there. So that is now my vertex. So that was really the difficult part. But you guys could have used cal I mean, technically, you guys on your test should know how to do this without the calculators. I know that this is bringing back a lot of stuff. But you got to remember, you know, when you come into these situations, if you're not a lot of calculator, they're going to expect this is all stuff that we've covered in the class. They're going to expect that you can do follow through on this work. Um, so now the easy part, though, that I think is now we just need to choose two points to the left or to the right. And remember, my advice was choose two points that are closest to the axis symmetry, but that are also closer to 0. 
So the two points that I'm going to choose are negative 1 and 0. So I'm just going to choose two points to the right. Now we do the same thing that we did before. y equals negative 1 squared plus 5 times negative 1 minus 3. Now to save a little time, I'm going to do this in my head, but I'll say it out loud. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. 5 times negative 5 is negative 1. So positive 1 plus negative 5 is negative 4. Minus 3 would be negative 7. So at that point, I go negative 1 down 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then at 0, I just plug in 0. And you can see we get negative 3. So ladies and gentlemen, we have half of our graph. And now what we do, Tyler, is we take this graph and we reflect it over the axis of symmetry. So you guys can see now I have my graph. Okay.